Oh, there's one on the dark sleeper. Oh, it's a good one. Bouncing it off the bottom like a jig. Oh yeah. <laughs> is that a large mouth? <laughs> Look at this large mouth on the dark sleeper. This is just an awesome, awesome way to catch them when they're on the bottom. If it's cloudy out and they're not really, you know, roaming. That's a nice large mouth there. 12 pound test. Mega bass dark sleeper. Half ounce, fishing it just like a jig. Donk. Oh, that was fun. Oh yeah, that was a nice solid thump. Half ounce dark sleeper. I mean, they eat it just like a jig. What happens is when you pop it off the bottom, there's so much lead forward inside the head here um, that it pops off the bottom and when you kill it, it swims right back down and it's got a little flat belly here. So it lays on its belly with the hook up, just like a jig would. Really cool fish. I'm gonna let it hit the bottom in about eight or 10 feet of water. Get the little pop, slow swim it back. I know that hook point is facing up so I can drag it right through those rocks, no problem. There's a couple different ways to fish the dark sleeper, but there's one common denominator when you're working this bait and that's contact with the bottom. That's where this bait really shines. Again, with the heavier weighted head and a flat belly, it's designed to be fished across the bottom. And it, as you can see, the hook point is covered by that dorsal fin. What I like to do is make a real long cast, um, primarily let the bait hit the bottom. And just like a tra traditional swim bait, I'm just going to slow roll it. I'm going to drop my rod tip. It's on the bottom there. And I'm just going to slow roll it across the bottom, basically uh, crawl it across those rocks. I know it's not going to get hung up. So if I just slow creep it across the bottom, almost like I'm dragging a jig, that's one way to get really big bites. And I mean, you feel them instantly. It's a big jig type bite. Another way to fish the dark sleeper is by almost pulling across the bottom. And if you feel it hang up just a hair, just give it one little pop, just like you would a football jig or a structure jig. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling that dark sleeper off the rocks and I'm letting it fall right back in, in those little crevices and little weed patches and stuff like that. But they love it when these little swim bait profile baits um, shoot out of these little spots and then fall right back in. And that's what triggers those big fish into biting. My back is against the wind, so I'm casting with the wind. This F575 javelin rod is seven foot five. I can make a really long cast with 12 pound Seaguar line. Um, and then it, it just accents that half ounce dark sleeper perfectly. That 12 pound test line doesn't restrict that half ounce bait. And I can just feel it. I mean, I can feel it just kind of stair stepping down those rocks. There's a little bit of grass involved. That dark sleeper is just, it's, it's swimming right through that stuff. I know the chin of that bait is bouncing the bottom like it's supposed to be. It's almost like a swim bait slash crankbait slash jig. And it just shows them something different, you know? And I'm always, I'm all about showing them something different. I mean, I, I love it. Every one of Meg, Mega Bass's baits, it's just different. I feel like I can go behind guys when I'm on tour and catch fish behind guys on baits like the Dark Sleeper, baits like the Hazadong Shad, Vision 110 Silent, whatever, whatever it is. I feel like it's different than the guy in front of me.